This is the uh, the bending form. So we're building a chase lounge, four of them actually, and this will be the back section. There will be a bolster pillow here. So what we're doing is we're bending um, inch thick by three and a half inch quartered white oak, and these will end up getting cut off somewhere around here. We have um, two and a half degrees that these are towed in. That's to account for any spring back. So once this this wood is bent, it's going to want to spring back a little bit. So hopefully. Uh, at two and a half degrees, we get relatively straight arms. What this is here is a band. So when you're when you're bending wood, and we're by no means experts or even we're novices, I'd say. Um, when you bend wood, you don't want it to stretch. So these blocks are one sixteenth larger than the actual width of the length of the wood, rather when this is stretched out straight. So we'll put the wood in between these blocks. And this metal will keep the wood from stretching on the outside. So it's going to compress on the inside and it's going to stay the same length on the outside, ideally. Um, you know, these are going to stop it from stretching. We built all this out. This is beefed up with, you know, multiple layers of plywood. And what's going to happen, these carabiners are going to hook onto these U-bolts on either side. This will be straight out. And um, we'll start to crank down. They cross over here and go back to this winch. So we'll be able to pull the whole thing this way and it'll, it'll end up, hopefully, if all things go as planned, into our final shape here. Right now, the wood is in uh, that PVC pipe there on the left-hand side. We actually, we drain the water out, so it's been soaking in there for about two weeks. Yeah. Um, so what we did is we actually, we stuck a hose down into the bottom and we hooked that hose up to a shop vac and sucked the water outside. We've got two pieces in this one and three in the other. We have one to experiment on. That'll be the first, the first piece. So, so we'll see. We did our tests, you know, about six weeks ago and they worked out. So we're hoping for the best. Once our steam setup is up to temperature, which I believe it is now. So this is just a, a um Erlex, I believe. Right? Yeah, what is this? A six this is a four inch PVC pipe. Uh what I did is I drilled some holes every six inches and I put a little quarter inch down in there so it made a platform on the inside. We have our steam going in here, goes over to this little Erlex steam generator. These are super cheap. You find this for like sixty or seventy bucks. Um with the PVC pipe, I mean all in a hundred bucks you can have a an eight foot long steam setup. We have a little thermometer at the end. You see we're reading just over 200 degrees, so it's about as hot as it's gonna get. We we'll pop the end off, stick our piece in there. We're gonna go 90 minutes on this. So we're gonna put the piece into the steam chamber. We'll put the cap back on, and we're gonna steam this one for 90 minutes. We steamed the first one for, I think, 75 minutes? 75, yeah. And it needed just a little more steam. So we're going to go 90 minutes on this one. They say anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes per inch. We have one inch thick oak, so um, I think 90 minutes is going to be yeah. be good for us this, this time. This one was 10 days in the water. The first, the test piece was four, three or four. Right, so. And we broke that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll take this. So the top's the inside. Yep. Be right behind you. I'm not gonna stick this one in. Okay, stick your side in. Okay. Let's get hook oh, clip your side in.
this screw goes right here. Yeah. Well, are we going to call this our second attempt or our third yeah. attempt? Our well, the first attempt was really just, we knew it was going to fail. This yeah. is our second real attempt. So for second, second real attempt, I'd say it went pretty well. Got a tiny gap here. Yeah. Tiny right gap there here. I think the grain wanted to split a touch here. This piece has a bunch of knots in it and we, um, this is just the sample piece. We kind of knew that it was going to Yeah, you can kind of fail to some right degree. Um, had a little breakage on our block here, but for a trial run, yeah, pretty good. So you're going to replace that block with some hardwood? Yeah, we'll move these. The problem is these bolts are too close to the end. As you can see here, it weakened the plywood. Yeah, it weakened the plywood, so we'll probably move these up cut it and add a piece of hardwood there. This strapping, I see a weld right here. Did you have to have that done? Yeah, so our buddy Manny welded these up for us. They only sell these in six foot lengths. Um, these are nine feet long, so we have staggered seams. So you have one seam here, and then on the other side you have two seams. And what kind of strapping is this? Um, they call this punched flat bar. It's just 1 16 thick zinc coated steel. Um, I seems think, to be a pretty yeah. common... Like you hang garage door track from it, you ever see it? Sure, you get this right from the home store? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this came from Home Depot. So what happens after this comes out of the clamp and you actually start building the, the chair? Well, what we're going to do is determine where these arms are going to be cut off. And some of that will be based on a drawing, some of that will be a little bit of, you know, setting in it and trial and error as far as marking. We'll determine how long the arms are, cut it, we'll, we'll joint this probably, get the edges nice and straight, um, run it past the table saw so that we have the, the same width. And uh, we'll take it one step at a time. We're gonna cut in some joinery for the, the, the parts, I guess we'll call them the, the arm supports. And it's really a pretty simple structure, you know, once, <laughs> once this piece is bent. It's, it's just a, a chaise that's shaped like this. So you have a platform and you have two arm supports and one in the back. And just tying it all together, we'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll try and mix some function with, uh, you know, an artistic aesthetic. And uh, we'll document it and you'll see what happens, as we do too. <laughs> Yeah. How do you run this through the joiner? Well, here's the joiner right here. And, you know, you see we have um, a helical head, and that's going to help a lot because the grain's it's flat sawn on the edge because we're using quarter sawn lumber. Um, and it's going to reverse. So we might have to remove this guard, actually. But we'll see. One person might be able to do it and hold this out of the way. You just run it around and Keep downward pressure on the on the outfeed fence where it belongs, and just follow the curve. You just, just as long as you take your time and you're careful. And once you have a joint edge, you can then rip it to size. Or yeah, width. well, you'll do do the same thing on the table saw. It, it's you know it's cumbersome, but we'll, say we set it to three and a quarter inches or whatever we determine, and uh, raise the blade. And you'll just feed it through, trying to keep the jointed edge against the fence. Just feed it through. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart. Easy as that. <laughs>